Meditation is something you do. That should be obvious, but it's controversial. I was teaching one time in Malaysia to a group that had seen many teachers come through and talked about doing concentration, doing mindfulness practice. And one of the questions after the talk was, you talk about meditation as if it were something you do, but we've been told that you don't do anything. Mindfulness is just allowing things to arise and pass away. Concentration, jhana, ha has to happen on its own. There's nothing you can do to induce it. But the Buddha never taught that. All of his instructions are things you do. You keep focused on the body in and of itself, the breath in and of itself. And you put aside greed and distress with reference to the world. Those are things you have to do. In fact, it's important that you realize that concentration is something you do. The whole path is something you do. As the Buddha said, it's the highest fabricated dharma, which means it's the best thing you can do. And you're going to learn about the nature of action as you do this. That's the whole point of insight. If you don't understand fabrication, then there's no way you're going to know when you've hit the unfabricated. And just think about the Buddha's own account of his awakening. It was insight into the principle of action, how causes and effects happen. He saw that certain actions led to good rebirths, other actions led to bad ones. And then there was the action, or the path of action, that led to the end of action. That was developing the Eightfold Noble Path. And you learn about action by watching the mind as it settles down, watching the mind as it maintains its concentration. And as you go through the various levels, you begin to see these levels of fabrication that fall away. When you're settling down first, you have to bring a lot of things into harmony. You've got the breath, you've got your awareness of the body, you've got the awareness itself and the feelings that go along with the breath, and you're trying to bring them all together. You're creating a state of becoming right here, and that becomes your laboratory case. You're going to talk to yourself as you do this, as you're settling down. But there comes a point where you don't have to talk to yourself anymore. Just let it go. That conversation. That's verbal fabrication. Then there's bodily fabrication. You get to the fourth jhana as the mind settles down and gets more and more quiet. The breath energy gets more full in the body because of the steadiness of your focus, undisturbed by thoughts about the world. And you get to the point where even the breathing stops. You can pursue this through the formless jhanas and get to the point where Mental fabrication stops as well. But the important thing is that you see all these levels of concentration as types of fabrication. You're looking for the origination of suffering. Now the word origination there means cause. And when, usually when the Buddha uses that word, he's talking about causes coming out of the mind. After all, craving comes out of the mind, clinging comes out of the mind. And that's what we're going to watch, see these things in action, and ideally get to the point where we don't have to do them anymore. We don't stop in action unless you actually see the action as an action, something you've chosen to do and something you can choose not to do. So the insight is going to revolve all around this. In fact, there are states of oneness and states of what they call neurotic breakthroughs where there's suddenly a great relief as you put down the burden of an old worldview. But you get there and you don't know how you got there. Things just suddenly open up. And that's not insight. That's just a pleasant experience along the way. The reason it's not insight is because you don't see what you did to induce that change. So the whole purpose of the meditation is to watch yourself in action. 
as the Buddha said, you find the Dharma by committing yourself to the practice of the Dharma, and then reflecting on it, watching what you're doing, and perfecting it from there. That's the real work of the meditation, and it's a large source of the insight. It's not something you have to simply get out of the way before you get to the great experiences. You look at yourself more and more as you're in it, engaged in intention until you really understand what it means to have an intention. And now the intention to create a state of becoming creates a place in the mind, and you get attached to that place, and then you're trapped in the parameters of how space and time deal with that place. It's all because of your actions. So meditation is something you do and something you watch for yourself, and it's all in the commitment and the doing and the sensitivity and the reflection that allows you to see the things that will open up new dimensions in the mind. I was reading recently where they've been developing what they call spirit tech, which are electronic devices that are supposed to help you with your meditation. They fall into two types that do the work for you. There's one type that engages in biofeedback. It can read the brain waves and tell you when your mind is focused and when it's not focused, and there's a little beep when you're not focused. In other words, it's doing the work of alertness. And there are others that can induce certain brain wave patterns. So you can have an experience of great oneness, peace, no separate ego. Whatever. And they say that allows you to gain enlightenment without doing all the work that people have been doing in the past. Well, it's not enlightenment at all. The machines are doing all the work for you, and particularly watching your own mind. You have to watch. You're not going to gain any insight. There's not going to be any real change in the mind unless the insights come from your watching yourself in action. You've got to do the mental feedback of acting and then watching. That's for the realizations that come. Maybe they can replicate the brain waves if someone has a sense of oneness with the universe. They've actually found the spot in the brain where you can induce that. But just because you have that feeling doesn't mean it's true. It's only when you've seen yourself in action, seen the process of fabrication. And seeing the opening where you don't have to fabricate things anymore, and you know for sure that it's not fabricated because you're so familiar with your own fabrications. That cannot be replicated by a machine. So we have to do the work. We, as one of the people talking about this, these machines, they said, you can have the enlightenment without di discipline. It's precisely the discipline that gives you the awakening. That verb that we translate as putting aside, as in putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world, can also be translated as subduing, but it's vinaya. It's the verb that's related to vinaya, discipline. You're disciplining your mind, and it's in the discipline that you're going to gain the insight. This is what the Buddha taught, a dhamma and a vinaya. For lay people, the vinaya is the five the five precepts, and then you have the eight precepts. For the monks, of course, it's a much larger load of precepts, but they're all there to make you really sensitive to what you're doing, the consequences of what you're doing, and very observant about your mind. So much of the video involves precepts or rules that can be broken only if they're broken intentionally. This keeps throwing you back on what your intentions are and also what your perceptions of the situation are. That can make a big difference, too. So the rules are not extraneous. The fact of discipline is not extraneous. There's nothing that can be abandoned or bypassed. It's there to make you sensitive to your actions, and that sensitivity then goes inside to 
the more subtle actions of the mind. And it's up to you to see them and to judge which actions are worth doing and which ones are not. It's in the sensitivity and in the refinement of your powers of judgment. That's where the real insights are going to come. So you've got to do the work. Keep on doing the meditation. Simply get better and better, watching yourself as you do it. And that's how the meditation yields its best results.